Yo, boys, welcome back to Star Spangled Gamblers. Today we are, um, Zubby, you're gonna have to tell me if this is like not PC, but we are um, praising the Lord, um, passing the ammo, and playing Russian roulette with the um, Senate as it maybe, like maybe, well, we're not supposed to call it gun control, we're supposed to call it gun safety, right? Um, yeah, we're gonna talk about that. Um, then stick around, uh, stick around. Um, we're going to talk about um, this like Chuck Schumer China sucks bill that's been hung up in the Senate for a year or two, um, I guess make microchips so we can buy cars again. And then um, Joe Manchin, Kirsten Cinema, and Joe Biden are back. I don't know if they ever went away, but um, we need to talk about Build Back Better, budget reconciliation. Um, these stories are moderately interesting. If you're a normal person, they're very interesting. If you're a political gambling degen, um, I think I just described you, right, Subby? Yeah, you did. That's me. Uh, full time now, right? Oh, full, full time. Uh, day, li living every day. Every day is different. Uh, it's awesome. Uh, it's awesome. Um, well, let me build you up. Uh, not everyone knows you by reputation. Um, I always like to say I used to think I was like the uh, you know a big daddy of betting on Capitol Hill, but I think at this point there's no disputing the fact that you are the best handicapper of the U.S. Senate that is in the game. Uh, will you accept that, Laurel, or are you going to be polite and refuse it? I, I think I'll be polite and refuse it, but uh, I, I, I do understand how the Senate works. I'll, I'll give myself that. What, what, what is <laughs> it's a broad thing? That's like what a lobbyist says. Well, I just, you know, I understand the Senate. You just watch yeah. C-SPAN all day. Is that all it takes? I read a lot of uh, CRS reports. I don't even know what that stands for, but that's Congressional where Research Service, bro. Yeah, there you go. Uh, I re read a lot of those, uh, watch a lot of C-SPAN, uh, wait, wait for Chuck Schumer to tell us what's going on. Um, that is the life. Okay, well, do you want to talk about um, uh, gun control? Yeah, uh, well, so this is... Uh, go ahead. Let me tee it up. Let me tee it up. Okay. All right, so every, look, we all know why um, we're talking about guns again. Um, should I just say that our country is like full of psychopaths and they're well armed? So let me quote from um, Punchbowl this morning. So obviously we're betting on whether this is going to happen, but this is an important topic, whether or not you're betting. Uh, so this morning, Punchbowl, uh, the OGs, uh, quote, for the first time since negotiations began last week in the wake of several horrific mass shootings, there are serious doubts that a deal can be reached by Senators Chris Murphy and John Cornyn. Uh, the lead Democratic and GOP negotiators on the package. Republicans insist Democrats must move in the direction on the so-called boyfriend loophole. There are also unresolved issues over the red flag provisions, although senators familiar with the matter believe those can still be closed out. Okay, real people talk. Um, this is DC Insider saying that um, last week's press tour where uh, Chris Murphy and John Cornyn gave each other a big Republican Democrat hug and said, guess what, we're gonna have a gun control bill. I'm sorry, gun safety, that's important, gun safety. Um, for the first time in 30 years and the story's over, uh, play tape. But of course, inevitably we've reached the point where the Senate says, maybe not. Um, did I get that right? Yeah, pretty much. That's where we're standing right now. Um, well, so what I was thinking, Zubby, is I would just ask you, like, I, I need to direct your energy. Uh, sure. I was just going to ask you some, like, true or false questions about um, what's going on in the Senate, and then we can talk about how we're betting on it. Does that sound fair? Perfect. Let's okay, so, so first of all, true or false, it matters that it's being called gun safety and not gun control. True. Why? Um, because the Republicans, so the Republicans are led by mostly John Cornyn uh, and Tom Tillis, I guess. Right. Um, but uh, John Cornyn is trying to make it clear in every statement that he gives that this is mostly a mental health uh, safety uh, bill. Um, and that he's at the point where he's saying like these red flag laws, which are laws that um, say that if somebody has a mental illness, you can go to court and get their guns taken away uh, temporarily. He say, he's saying, well, we want that money to be like just given to the states to use for mental health if they don't want to do red flags. So, so basically, like, here's the way I hear what you're saying is like gun control equals like hacky Democratic campaign term for don't rural Republicans suck. Gun safety equals hacky, um, like, you know, uh, pollster crafted Mitch McConnell term for um, this is not gun control. Um, we are not taking guns from your cold, dead fingers. We're actually just going to temporarily take guns from your like very much alive, but maybe mentally unstable fingers. 
Yeah. Big focus on mental health, big focus on school safety, um, big, big focus on anything that's not. And they're making it very clear on all the stuff that they made sure it wasn't in the deal that was gun control, like right. raising the age for an AR-15 to 21. So yeah, gun safety, the fact that they're calling gun safety is very important. Right. I feel like that tells me that there's like some bipartisan buy-in that they've invented a new stupid term to describe what they're doing. Yes. Um, okay. Next true or false question. Um, uh, we quoted from Punchbowl up top. Politico said recently to quote, a bipartisan group of senators is taking longer than they hope to settle the language of the gun safety bill, raising doubts about whether or not the chamber can pass the deal before the July 4th recess. So I'll interject here and remind you why July 4th is so important. If you are betting on this, which the two of us are, um, July, June 30th or July 1st, you'll have to remind me is the deadline for predicted market to settle. So basically, yeah. We are all betting on whether or not this happens more or less by the 4th of July. And um, John Cornyn, the lead Republican on this said, quote, we're not ready to release any smoke, so we don't have a deal yet. Uh, I'd say it's either fish or cut bait. So we are into the fourth quarter. So true or false, Subby. Um, we are, this has all been for nothing. The Senate is basically just gonna shoot another blank on gun safety after 30 years of shooting blanks. Yeah, so I'm going false. Um, I am not like 100% certain on that. Um, I think um, so what we're seeing is we're seeing a ton of public negotiation from Cornyn, Tillis, Murphy and Kirsten Cinema. Um, we're seeing like they are very publicly talking to the press. They're very publicly running into each other's offices. They're very publicly staying the weekend and continuing to negotiate. Um, and they have the votes like they, they, they're they very clearly saying those 10 Republicans, they're locked in, they're not moving. And then Mitch McConnell sort of we, we can talk about this later. I know you're going to want to get into this. Yeah, we do have. We have, we've got a question in the script for this, too. Um, yeah. But so, OK, can I actually tell you I have like a different reason to be faithful about this. Did you hear Chris Murphy on the daily? I uh, no, I didn't get the chance to listen yet, but okay. uh, I know, I know what he said. Yeah. 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 I mean, it's like, it's amazing to me, the salesmanship around um, gun safety or gun control is super telling. So um, on one hand, you've got the Republicans saying it's not a gun control bill. And we covered that. But Chris Murphy, who's the, the lead hardo, the lead gun hardo for the Democrats, is um, what's he saying? He's saying, well, it doesn't matter what's in the bill. Like that's his whole sales pitch to the Democratic caucus yeah. and, you know, liberals is it doesn't matter what's in the bill. The whole point is that we're going to prove that there's not an electoral stigma to gun yeah. control. And once we do that, we can be more ambitious in the future. So I feel like his standards and the standards of probably most Democrats, I think he sold them that like literally they'll accept anything like they just they just want a bill. And they'll worry about the rest later, which tells me that like they'll fold and the Republicans will, you know, go along with whatever piece of shit that, you know, spits out of the sausage factory. Yeah. So I, I would say both sides are highly incentivized to get a deal here. Uh, the Democrats are on uh, we need to do something um, type of thing. We need to like literally do anything. We're going to call it gun control. We need to show that we're not just like complete like losers and can get something done. Um, and they'll like that framing is perfect. That's how they'll set it up. Um, and to be clear, with the recess coming up, I think it would look absolutely ridiculous for them to go home for two weeks being at like the finish line uh, with that framing that they need to do something. The Republicans, I think, based on um, just the fact that they came to a deal. Um, the fact that like Mitch, Mitch McConnell mentioned like the polling on this the other day and how popular it was. I don't think they want this issue uh, to be like even like remotely in the news, like not dominating the news. Um, I think they want this to like resolve and then move on, back on to like hammering Biden on inflation uh, all the time instead of like 50 percent of the time. So I think both sides are highly incentivized to clear this off the decks before they go home for recess. Um, now it's the same, it's a bunch of old people who don't really care about doing their jobs. Like maybe they just want to go home for two weeks. Right. Um, but I think the incentives are very high 
Um, and I think you're sort of just seeing like a, a final tug of war at the finish line. Um, and I, I actually think the Democrats would this boyfriend loophole loophole thing. I think they would drop it to take the deal um, if they if they need or just right. like give one in whatever he wants. Like I feel like we're in a weird nether world here where like policy doesn't really matter, which I think is actually how the Senate and the House usually operate. Like every every single thing that happens in Congress has to fit between uh, politics. Like you know, are there the votes and what are the consequences for the right. votes? and uh, procedure, you know, like what are the different wickets that you have to get the croquet ball through? And then policy just like fills in the 10% of space in between the two. Right. Now, having said that, I'm looking at predicted right now. And I mean, the, the, first of all, uh, the, I guess it's a, it's a whip count market. So how many votes in the Senate for a gun control bill by June 30th? Okay, far and away, the, the most expensive bet is to bet that there are 59 or fewer, which is basically a bet that this bill doesn't pass. So right. why are the two of us so completely at odds with the wisdom of the crowds here? Yeah, I mean, I mean, the, one, the reporting momentum is against the two of us. Um, right. it, it's, it, there's a bunch of snags. Uh, that's what all the reporting is saying. Um, and two, it, there's just a bias on that the Senate won't do anything. That's a good uh, bias, by the way. Yeah, no, it, it is in general. Um, it, but if this was like a one week recess, I would not be too confident because I, I think but like a two week recess is a very long time and we'll get into this in a bit, but there's other stuff that they really need to do or really are going to want to do when they come back in July. Uh, so like, well, let me do you one better. Yeah. What, who says it's going to be a two week recess? Oh, exactly. Uh, we can get it. Exactly. So it's uh, like theoretically there's three legislative days left. Um, if they come to an agreement, like, the threat to hold people into the weekend or bring them back the next week for like Tuesday and Wednesday or something like it's like when you do something like that, someone like Rand Paul goes like, well, I, I just like want my amendment vote or something. And then we'll go home. Like, so, yeah, I, I think this is like, couldn't be more clear. And then we can, I can go back to asking you stupid questions about this. I, I think it could not be more clear. Mark my words, keen dog promise hand to God. This bill is dead if it's not done by fourth yeah. of july it is I, I bury it in the fucking grave it is dead because when you send um when you send those uh, republican legislators back to their home states for a week or two weeks and they're just getting hammered by the like the wingnut caucus that let's be honest those are the people who pick primaries like you give them a week to have that legislative text picked apart like they are not coming back ready to vote for this bill Hundred yeah. percent dead if it if they go home. Yeah, and I think publicly you'll start. So like Murphy and Cornyn are like the leaders on this. I think they'll just start going at each other if that happens. Yeah. Uh, I mean, they'll they'll just like and Murphy will say Cornyn didn't want to deal at all and just tanked it because his caucus didn't actually like it. And then Cornyn will say Murphy tried to make this like a liberal gun control bill, and, and it'll just it'll just tank. We saw something similar with like, they agreed on like COVID funding right. or something. And then they couldn't figure out how to get like an amendment vote. And now that's just like totally, totally gone. No one's ever talked about that again. Right. Um, so I, I agree. It, it's dead if it doesn't pass. Okay. So wow. let's, let's talk about that. So um, I'll quote, um, I'll roll these into one. So let me quote uh, the Hill where um, Mitch McConnell said, presumably to a gallery full of microphones, quote, uh, this is Mitch talking about himself. For myself, I'm comfortable with the framework. And if the legislation ends up reflecting what the framework indicates, I'll be supportive. So Mitch McConnell saying, I support this. Um, meanwhile, uh, according to Politico, John Cornyn, uh, Republican in Texas, we've been talking about him a lot, said, quote, um, he's aiming for 70 plus senators to vote for the final packages. But the conservative geo, but conservatives in the GOP conference are already questioning parts of the framework as well as a sense quick preferred blah 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 blah. Okay, so the people who are in the room are saying this is going to pass by a wide margin. The people mm -hmm. who are out of the room say it might not pass at all. So are you like like? I mean, I know what your betting strategy is. I know what my betting strategy is. Like. This tells me that buying cheap options for like anything from 61 to infinity is the way to bet on this. Am yeah. I like out of step with reality here? 
no, this is uh, this is the best type of market in that those so um, 59 or fewer will likely stay where it is or get more expensive. And then every other bracket will stay where it is or get cheaper. Um, and you don't we we don't have to know whether it's 61 or 64 or 68. Um, we can just buy them all um, and get a massive amount of upside. Uh, that's my betting strategy. Uh, if I, I don't know if you want to get into the individual senators on how they might vote. I, well, let's, I, let's do it. Ahead. But let's let uh, let me say this for people who are dumb like me who aren't absolute degens. So we are the, the way we're betting on this is we're betting on how many votes the bill gets. And you can either spend 65 to 70 cents per share betting that it doesn't pass. Or you can spend three, four, five cents to bet that there's 60 or 61 or 62, all the way up to 69 or more senators. So what Zubby right. and I are doing is we're just buying cheap shares of everything over the threshold of the bill passing, which adds up to like a 30 cent play. So we're we're looking to make you know three times our money just by buying cheap on the assumption that this will pass and you know right. the, the farm animals aren't predicted to have it wrong. Absolutely right. Couldn't have said it better. Um, okay, so what's your, um, you and I talked about this a little bit before this, but like, what do you think, what do you think the sweet spot is for this votes wise? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I would guess uh, 64 or 65. Um, that, granted, um, for our listeners, uh, you should know that, like, you're gonna have to pay attention to any COVID or any family members getting sick from senators because if one democrat is out um then you're gonna that's gonna be one less vote so uh just a backdoor thing to keep an eye on but um i believe so there are 10 republican senators um on this agreement um just quickly uh blunt burr portman toomey cornyn tillis cassidy collins romney graham um, so I, I don't think any of those, if this is going through or going to uh, back out, uh, it's mostly people retiring, not up for reelection and might not run for reelection or Mitt Romney. Um, right. Like that's the crew. Right. This um, is like the vote your conscious group who are like, finally, right. we can just do what we want. We don't have to worry about our voters. Right. Um, past that, it's a little trickier to find who the Republican senators are. I believe that if Cornyn comes to an agreement that he likes, uh, Mitch McConnell will vote for this. Uh, I know you disagree. And I don't know if you want to address that. Yeah. I mean, I think when like the, the leader of any party says he'll support something like the, the implication of that is, is that there'll be no punishment and members are free to vote their conscience, but it doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to vote for it. Um, now I know that that's been reported differently by some people, but I would not personally count on that vote, but you know, I'm definitely betting as if it's going to be there. Yeah. Yeah. I'm betting as it's, if it's going to be there. Um, uh, Murkowski is in Alaska, very gun friendly state. Um, but she's only said positive things and I would count her as she's a up this year though. Yeah, she is. She is. What, what's that, going on with that? Does she still have a psychotic primary or is she free she to vote her conscious? Yeah, she has a very psychotic primary. Oh, yeah. Um, so she's but, not voting for this. Well, I, that's what I thought with the Supreme Court. And then yeah. she just went ahead and did it. Um, I, I, again, I, I will take her at what she says for now. And then past that, you're looking at a lot of either senators running for president or senators in very rural states. Uh, so if you like compare this to the infrastructure bill, both senators in Idaho voted for that. Right. Neither one of them are going like it's just not going to happen. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if you saw like a Jim Risch or a Mike Crapo come in on this, though. I, I, I would I would be surprised. Uh, I mean, but like Jim Risch is like a semi responsible senator at this point. He's the chairman of the, the ranking member on foreign affairs, right? Yeah, he is. Um, but the the Second Amendment is um, their probably biggest issue. I would yeah, say. yeah. Um, so uh, you're looking like I don't know who the other senators would be. Um, I, just to give our listeners 
my guess, um, my guess is that the you get five more Republican senators, and they're Mitch McConnell, Lisa Murkowski, Chuck Grassley, Todd Young, and Shelley Moore Capito. That's my guess right now. Um, I could see three less than that. I could see three more. Um, I, I think getting to B Max. Um, while I was actually buying that pretty heavily to begin with, and I'll, I'll take the two cent shares um, just because why not? But um, I think there are too many, you're looking at too many rural states, and then you're kind of like pivoting to, well, like Rick Scott and Marco Rubio supported this in Florida, but I, I just, Rick Scott's running ads nationally right now because he thinks he's going to be president i would i would be very surprised by that yeah i i think the sweet spot here is i i can come up with formulations for why all of these people will vote for it and why they won't i think that maybe we'll see one or two surprises beyond the 10 names that we have i'm pretty skeptical that we're going to see like five or six mm. um but uh, i i do expect to be surprised and i do expect the bill to pass so i think you know opportunistically buying cheap shares I will admit to you, Zabi, I think I got a little too excited yesterday. I think I bought some brackets that were a little bit too high. It's not a problem. You know, those are basically free trades, um, you know, so I'll get out of them. But um, I, I think like my heaviest buy is at 62 uh, and 61. That's that's where most of my position is, is down there in the kind of low 60s. Yeah, I'm at, I'm at 64 and 65, but I, I understand that completely. Um, Okay, so um, we will, as um, Zoltar likes to say, uh, sometimes we look like idiots. I think maybe in a week or two, we're going to look like idiot savants on this play, but um, we might look like idiots. Um, 